Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. In this session, we are going to discuss uh, another aspects of uh, market failure that is resulting through from uh, asymmetric information uh, is called moral hazard. So moral hazard is the asymmetric information problem uh, that occurs after a financial tra transaction uh, takes place. So when the seller of a security may have uh, incentives to hide information, uh, engage in activities that are undesirable uh, for the purchases of the security. Um, moral hazard has the important consequences uh, for uh, whether a firm finds it easier to raise funds with the debt than with the equity contracts. contracts. So, let us discuss this concept, uh, the concept called moral hazard uh, in detail, what does it mean? So, let us take, in order to explain this, uh, let me take the case of uh, existence of insurance. In the insurance market, how the problem of moral hazard uh, exists? So, in the case of insurance market, for example, uh, health insurance market, after buying, this is an exposed behavior. Uh, on the side of those who bought insurance. That means indifference to a loss because of the existence of insurance. So what happens that once you got insurance coverage, uh, because then actually your medical bill, it will be paid by the insurance companies and you have a tendency uh, to uh, utilize healthcare resources even if it is not even required. Right, because this is actually called in the case of health insurance market, we can say that uh, the use or provision of uh, more expensive care because the insurer reimburses uh, the cost. So, if put in a very simple language, that means suppose if you have health insurance coverage, then even for some small illness, a minor illness, disease condition, you will be visiting a hosp hospital. And even for hospitalization, some of the uh, illness episode, it may not need hospitalization, but since you have insurance coverage, uh, you think that is uh, anyway the insurer is going to reimburse, insurer is going to pay your bill, uh, you have an incentive to use uh, the hospitalization facilities, even if, even if it is not really necessary. So that is one. Then another one is taking less preventive actions. That means since you have um, insurance coverage, you know that the price of healthcare is going to be zero for you. So, you will be uh, willing to take more risk whichever is uh, related to uh, your uh, uh, health, even driving or taking some more risky if, uh, activities, uh, you will be getting engaged because you think that you have been covered with the health insurance for your health related aspects. So, the issue of moral hazard, it arises because medical needs are not fully monitorable. You know why? Because of uh, asymmetric information. So, moral hazard arises uh, because medical needs are not fully monitorable and uh, monitorable uh, mainly because uh, asymmetric information. So, a insurance company uh, cannot really monitor or assess uh, how much care uh, an insury is required, right? Because these are the not fully, there is no uh, clear cut information about it because only the individual who uh, who using it know whether how much the care he needs and even only hospital within about the providers of care also, for them also there is actually between the providers of the care and insurance company, for them also there is uh, asymmetric information about the medical needs of patients. So, both insured and healthcare providers on the same side of the incentive system. That means insured because for him the healthcare uh, cost is zero 
and for healthcare providers because they are also a business entity uh, they have the incentive to maximize their profit so there is a saying that uh, whatever the built bed all the built beds are always occupied bed right so that means they always need to whatever the healthcare facilities they already built uh, they want to ensure that there is all the full uh, capacity utilization is happening so if I put like that, actually simply it has both the demand side and supply side moral hazard we can identify in the case of insurance market. Uh, one is on the demand side, it is called over utilization of healthcare because insurance will pay the bill. And the second one is actually the take less preventive care uh, because you have been covered with uh, health insurance. So here the marginal cost is zero due to the health insurance coverage. So let us look at this diagram where the price uh, price is given on the in the on the y axis and on the x axis the quantity of healthcare products are uh, given. So this one is the demand curve. Uh, this is the demand curve uh, of this a particular individual, for example, or we can also make it as a market uh, demand curve as well. So the demand curve also says that this is the willingness to pay for the healthcare product and suppose when the suppose here the price is this much a consumer they will be buying this much healthcare products if the price is this much for example so each point we can see that when the price keep on declining when the lower the price uh, you can see that the consumers the, the peop people will be demanding more healthcare right when the moment the price keep on uh, declining right so that means there is a inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. So based on this, suppose take for example P1, an individual, uh, suppose the price is P1 in the market. So the, in the healthcare pro market, suppose the price is P1. So given this given P1 price, the quantity demanded in the market is going to be Q1. Right, this is going to be the quantity demanded. So what will be the total medical bill? Uh, you know that P1 times that the, this um, P1 times all this area P1 times um, so these are the all the uh, healthcare bill that the P1 times Q1 right P1 uh, times Q1 uh, is going to be the total medical expenditure of this particular individual for in, for example uh, you know what once the individual is having uh, insurance coverage you know what is the though the market price is p1 but he has to pay the price only zero right because for him the marginal cost becomes zero so look at when the price is zero this is the maximum uh, such as the maximum amount the maximum quantity he is going to demand and he is going to demand he or she is going to demand at uh, this much that means o uh, q1 o q1 so you know the market value because of this when the price is market price is still p1 only market price is still p1 uh, without insurance he will be demanding only this shaded area this market area this is the total healthcare expenditure but since the marginal cost is going to be zero you know that this area this um, uh, rectangle this area is going to be utilized by uh, this individual because he has insurance right so you can see that the area uh, represented the rectangle area represented by q1 uh, b c q2 uh, this area you can see that this is going to be additionally utilized because the person is having insurance coverage this actually represents the moral hazard effect so this is the moral hazard the this much area that this consumption this much additional consumption uh, of healthcare the demand is called is going to be we can be called as uh, moral hazard or demand side moral hazard just because this much additional consumption is happening uh, because this exposed this is the behavioral change suppose this person didn't have insurance we can see that he will be consuming only this much area this much area only he will be consuming but because uh, insurance coverage uh, he consume not only this in addition this much additional he is going to he or she is going to consume that means uh, this represent the area this is the due to the moral hazard uh, behavior uh, in order to whether this is theoretical part that means what we shown here is the theoretical forecast uh, actually there are several experiments there are lots of research to also establish that moral hazard is a reality 
this actually exist so one experiment was conducted by a rand corporation this is this was in 1970s what they did that they did carried out a standard laboratory experiment design experimental design methods where a total of 5809 enrollees was chosen from four us cities and two rural sites so by giving different options of uh, health insurance plan with the different co payments for the selected people co payments means uh, out of the total bill health bill some portion the insurer also need to pay for example if you uh, so there are two way one is called um, co payments there are two types of co payments uh, one is called co insurance one is called co insurance because here co insurance means of the total medical bill a certain fraction certain proportion should be paid by the insurer and the remaining will be paid by for example for instance here the insurance company suppose the co insurance is for example 10 percentage that means of the total medical bill 10 percentage should be paid by the insurer and because this is in addition to premium premium they already paid they already got Uh, insurance coverage but out when during in order to uh, discourage from them from using unnecessary using health care in order to reduce the moral hazard they actually make a uh, co insurance then the remaining 90 percentage will be paid by the insurance companies that is co insurance another uh, tool is another co payment tool is called deductibles a deductible means instead of percentage there is a fixed amount of the total bill whatever the bill at a certain amount a fixed amount it should be paid by the individual or the insured individual for example 100 dollar this is the deductible uh, so that means a deductible means is one of the co payment that means uh, what suppose the individual is making a healthcare pay a bill of a dollar 150 so out of this uh, 100 should be paid by the insured individual and the remaining 50 will only be paid by insurance company so that means the initial cost that the certain portion that the fixed amount it has to be paid by the insured people right so so because of this this will discourage the insured people of utilizing healthcare for unnecessary purpose means if it's not uh, really important or necessary then they won't go for utilizing healthcare because then you know that they already have to pay uh, 100 of the us uh, deductibles this is co payment so in this experiment people have been allotted uh, into different co payments starting from zero co payment zero co payment means they don't have to pay anything that means whether this 10 percentage or this 100 dollar nothing so there for some individuals they have been complete insurance full insurance uh, if they go to hospital they everything will be covered by the insurance companies but some in the according to the some individuals of this uh, some individuals have been allotted different levels uh, different rates of uh, co insurance and deductibles co insurance for example some for example 5 percentage uh, some samples uh, giving 10 percentage uh, some sample for example 15 percentage uh, 20 percentage like that so what happened here is that based on after the experiment it was found that those who oh, paid zero co payment zero co payment there is over utilization that their healthcare use was much much higher than those who are paying this co payment so that means uh, moral hazard is a reality as per this ran health insurance experiment uh, what we have discussed so far is on the demand side similarly in the insurance market there is supply side moral hazard as well you know supply side moral hazard means that is supplier induced a uh, demand uh, you know that this is mainly because if somebody is having insurance coverage normally uh, sometime some doctors or hof- hospital they encourage them to use more healthcare maybe asking them even they might have gone to the hospital for some minor ailments minor health conditions but the hospital or doctor will encourage them or will make them to use Uh, for example more diagnostics and encourage them to for example use hospitalization not just for one day suppose so what we can see that some of the uh, most insurance company they say that you need to have 
uh, they will pay only for hospitalization not for outpatient care. So because of uh, this uh, supply side and demand side moral hazard behavior what, it, what will happen there that in order to get insurance coverage even the ailments that is requiring only outpatient care they will be taking uh, inpatient care as well that means they will be getting hospitalized. And not only sometimes some cases they may be needing only one day hospitalization but since they already have insurance coverage sometimes hospitals they will prolong their stay in the hospital and they will also will be undergoing some more expensive health care because all they think that anyway this individual is not pay, paying the bill is the company is going to pay and you know that uh, since me medical care needs are not fully monitorable and because of these patients have no clear cut information how much care he or she uh, needs. So not, not only that, that is one, uh, another thing is that anyway it does not matter to the insured person because anyway the company is going to pay the bill. So both of them, the, the, uh, the hospital, the supplier, healthcare supplier and the insured that the patient both of them are on the same incentive system, same page and for insurance company for them also is very difficult to monitor how much care actually one individual needs. So this is called mainly this is the supply side moral hazard problem. So when we apply this concept uh, in other forms of market not only insurance market in equity financing. So in the case of equity financing the equity contracts such as common stocks, common stocks you are familiar that means are claims to a share in the profits and assets of a business. So equity contracts are subject to a particular type of moral hazard called principal agent problem. They are subject to a particular type of moral hazard called the principal agent problems. So here you know that uh, in the case of a firm which is should share, uh, you know that who is the principal here, who is the agent. According to principal agent TF, uh, framework, the principal here is the stockholder and the agent is the manager or the employees, the managers of the company. And you know here the issue is that uh, when managers own only a small fraction of the firm they work for. Suppose they do not own the firm at all that is once and but mostly uh, most of the managers they will be getting some share in the company. Uh, so you know when the managers own only a small fraction of the firm they work for. Uh, the stockholders who own most of the firm's equity, who we can also call them principals, are not the same people as the managers of the firm. Thus, the managers are the agents of the owners here. This separation of uh, ownership and control involves moral hazard in that the managers in control may act in their own interest rather than in the interest of stockholders or that is the owners of the firm. Because the managers have less incentive to maximize profit than the stockholders that the owners do. And you know that because of that actually there is a conflict here clearly what the management wants, the agent in the equity firms, e equity financing contracts and what the shareholders want. And you know that the shareholders they are interested to maximize profit, they are interested more in the dividend or higher the dividend suppose if the company earns more profit and when the company earns for example more profits and obviously you know that uh, the dividend also increases. When the dividend increases uh, the formula that we have studied in previous session you know that the stock price is going to increase. When the stock price is going to increase obviously you know that they are going to make more capital gain. So that is what the shareholders want. So they want more uh, dividend plus they can also get more uh, capital gain as well. But about the management, management because as we saw here is that they have less incentive because they are not the owners of the firm. So their objective function may be uh, getting more fame for them, maybe the top management. Uh, they may be interested in doing some experiment and to introduce new reforms, maybe acquiring new market, uh, new, acquiring new agencies, uh, sorry new firms and expanding their market to new areas, new geographical area and expanding their business to new new areas for example. So that, that all come with the management because that actually gives them that maximize their objective function, right? their utility function. So, but what the shareholders want actually they want to maximize their profit. So actually both of them are on the different uh, pages. So then this will lead to some kind of moral hazard issue uh, in the uh, equity financing firms. 
uh, so you know why because the principal uh, they are having less information because they are not actively involved they are not involved in the day to day operation of the firms but at the same time agents who are having more information they sometimes manipulate the information sometimes they hide the information and they manipulate the information so as a result there can be some that the conflict of interest and this will lead to moral hazard issues in equity financing just to summarize this point the equity financing uh, what happened that the agent sometimes they uh, invest in, in more risky uh, business activities because to maximize their objective function right so the main reason that we have seen here is the separation of ownership and control of the firm so that means managers pursue personal benefits and power uh, rather than the profitability of the firm so mainly because the conflict of interest and how to solve moral hazard problem in equity financing uh, some of the tools is that actually align managers interest with the stockholders so bring both of them together because conflict of interest reduce the conflict of interest that means align their interest align managers interest with uh, stockholders interest so in this case one solution is talk as compensation stocks as a compensation because in the payment package that most employees getting they also get not only the salary in addition they also get stocks as stock also become a part of their uh, package so no, that means executives were given uh, stock options that provided lucrative payoff if a firm stock price rose above a certain level that also actually given in addition to stocks uh, they also the executive the managers uh the top managers not only the top managers but the managers at the different levels were given stock options suppose if the firm's stock price rose above a certain level so you know the why it has been done you know to reduce the moral hazard problem so then they will be investing they will be carrying out their business activities in a way to uh, maximize profit for the firm so that high dividend and high stock price right um monitoring here also you know monitoring by shareholders uh, that is another option that means uh, monitoring the uh, monitor the business activities uh, of the firm by a group of shareholders but you know that this is a kind of redu- uh, lead to a kind of free rider problem again suppose of the all the shareholders only if a few are uh, doing this monitoring means monitoring means it's also an expensive business it also involves real cost uh, lots of uh, expenses so because of that what will do that if some shareholders of of a company suppose a few few shareholders they are monitoring the business activities of that firm then you know that there will be a free rider problem because the other shareholders think that anyway someone is monitoring so uh why should i do so uh, i am going to benefit out or benefit out of it anyway so that means uh, other will, others will simply free ride here so that means again the issue here is that even monitoring by shareholders though it's a solution but the risk of free rider problem uh, arises here as well so one of the solution to overcome uh, this more hazard problem in equity financing is the venture capital so how venture capital industry works in the venture capital industry there are mainly four main players one is entrepreneurs who need funding entrepreneurs who need funding uh, investors investors means who want high returns who have money with them and who want high return and investment bankers who need companies to sell and the venture capitalist who make money for themselves by making market for other the market for the other three the venture capital actually bring uh, all the other three players together to make the equity uh, in the in the case of uh, equity uh, uh, raising equity fund and making this company to work venture capital uh, what the venture capital firms do here is that uh, venture capital firms pool the resources of their partners uh, use the funds to help uh, budding entrepreneurs start uh, new businesses so in exchange for supplying the venture capital the firm receive an equity share in the new business so when because the verification of earnings and 
earnings and profit is so important uh, in eliminating moral hazard, uh, venture capital firms usually insist on having several of their own people participate as members of the managing body that is the board of directors of the new businesses so they can keep a close watch on uh, new firms activities you know that as a result uh, they can monitor the day to day business activities of this firm and then reduce the moral hazard problem uh, in this market the, when whenever when venture capitalists a uh, capitalist uh, come into the field So let's now see how more hazard problem exists in the debt market. So I'm showing you some pictures here. Uh, so you can see that once the firms borrow money from the bond market, sometimes actually when they are more borrowing it for, they actually clearly show that this has been borrowed for this particular business activities. But what is the guarantee that they'll be using the entire fund, the all, all the fund for this business activity only, this particular uh, investment activity only? they will be using some of the fund or most of the fund maybe for something else as well maybe how can you be so sure that your investment is not being used to buy one of these vacation homes it's also possible right so you can see that in india even when you go through the dailies uh, newspapers uh, you can see that uh, there are uh, so lots of frauds happening bank frauds happening those for example the many fraudsters what they they borrowed money from the banks but they have utilized this fund for their personal benefit and uh, personal lifestyle right in order to finance uh, their uh, expensive lifestyle they they have utilized you are so familiar with this kind of activities uh, happening in india happening in india so one of the fraud i am showing you an extreme form of moral hazard it happened in the us this is you can see that this person made off so this is uh, one of the biggest uh, fraud happened in the US. Uh, he actually borrowed from many people. He actually ran a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme means actually borrowing from one firm or one source in order to pay for repay the loan from the other source. Suppose he initially borrowed 100 crore from, uh, he raised the 100 crore from the market and then he further borrowed that in order to repay this loan right that's a he ran a ponzi scheme so that means accordingly he raised lots of fund and that means the why he borrowed actually the uh, he borrowed this money for investment purpose uh, but it has been utilized for uh, something else that means to run a ponzi scheme so in uh, he was also well known uh, reputed was the chairman of nasdaq a uh, chairman of uh, organization of US securities. This is the extreme form of moral hazard. Uh, this kind of problem you can see that you might have seen uh, elsewhere as well. So in the next session, uh, we will continue uh, our discussion on how to reduce uh, moral hazard problem uh, in the finance market. Thank you.